Hello, welcome to this concept video on trig substitution. In this video, we just look at the idea behind it. We go in detail for one of the forms. And then at the end of the video, I have a couple summary slides for you. Things that you could uh, sort of copy down as a quick reference when, when um, trying to do this um, technique. We want to have something that we can quickly reference and and so that's what i'll have for you in the last couple slides all right so what is this about well we're going to have functions that we're trying to find the antiderivative of that might take on one of these three forms now it might not be exactly one of these three forms it might be one of these guys raised to a power or um, some other type or maybe it's on the denominator so just know that involving one of these three forms or powers of them and what we do is we introduce trig into the problem. There's no trig in any of this, but we're gonna bring trig in. For the first type, we're gonna rip out X and put in A sine theta. For the second type, we're gonna replace X by A tan theta. And for the third type, we're gonna replace X by A secant theta. And upon doing that, replacing all the X's with these particular trig functions, we actually end up with the radical being replaced with the trig function. And all in all, we'll have um, a new integral that will be only in theta, and it'll involve trig functions. And integrating that might require a, a previous technique that you learned about just trig integrals or integrating powers of trig functions. Okay, so bring in trig so that you can integrate. That's the idea. Why would you wanna do that? Let's take a look. Why would you want to bring trig into a problem when it didn't have trig to begin with? Well, let's see why. It's this radical that could cause trouble. And so we're going to replace that radical. We want something that's not so troublesome in its place. Uh, assume that A is greater than zero so that we can um, uh, start this out. And we're going to let X equal A sine theta for this particular type. There's three different types. This is the first type. I just want to look at it in detail so I can motivate why we're doing this. Um, so there'll be individual parts of the integral that you'll have to sub for. And um, you could strictly just replace every x with a, okay? But then, now remember, there's always a dx afterwards. And so we have to replace that as well. So right away, after you write what x is, you should write what dx is. The, the derivative of sine is cosine. So dx is a cosine theta d theta. Remember, a is a constant, okay? But what we're here for is to figure out how the radical gets replaced. Okay, and so let's go through the algebra. It's not, it's not something you have to do every time. At the bottom of this column here, we're gonna have exactly what the radical gets replaced with. And you could just use that, um, you know, when you, when you approach a problem like this. But I want you to see why it's like that though. Strictly replace a by, x by a sine theta. And now x is squared. Now, so we have to square the a and square the sine theta. And we could factor out an a squared. It'll be in both of them at that point. Upon doing that, the reason why this works is because what you're left with is 1 minus sine squared, which is itself a perfect squared. Okay? It's because 1 minus sine squared is cosine squared that we're actually choosing this particular trig sub. If we chose another trick sub, this wouldn't work out this way. The purpose is to get this radical out of there. And if you have the square root of a perfect square, then they should outdo each other. They should cancel each other out. They're inverse operations. But technically, what we need is an absolute value bar at first. We're going to reason out why those absolute value bars don't need to be there. Um, it's based off the fact that the angles that we'll be using are angles where the cosine will always be positive. And so because of that, then, and A being positive, there's no need for the absolute value bars. And so your radical A squared minus X squared is replaced by A cosine theta. And so you have an integral that has a radical in it. And now we know the replacement to the radical. We also know the replacement to DX. There might be some other parts in the integral, it might be an X squared somewhere. But we have all the elements we need to do all the replacing and then our, our goal is actually to end up in a trig integral that we could do. Okay. Um, just some finer details about why we are talking about these particular angles, negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. It's because when you do this trig sub x equal a sine theta, 
then um, solving for theta by dividing by a and taking an arc sign, you'll see that theta is the arc sign of x over a. Arc sign has range of y values or output values that are between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. The reason for that is because we, we have to take the sine function to be able to invert it, and it's not invertible over its entire domain. So we restrict the domain of sine, and by choice, we have chosen to restrict it to be minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. So then the, the range of arc sine, being its inverse function, has just those angles. And cosine of all of those guys in quadrant 4 and in quadrant 1, they are always positive. And that's why we could say that cosine is always positive and be able to drop those absolute value bars. Let's think about x. Um, x can only take on values between minus a and a. If x was going to be something um, bigger than a, then what will happen with that square root is it'll be a negative underneath that square root. And we can't have that. We're not dealing with imaginary numbers. So theta takes on values between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. And x takes on values between minus a and a. OK, great. Um, once you're done with that integral that's in trig and you get that antiderivative that's in trig, in certain instances, we might need to go back in terms of x. And what's going to do that to, for you is, is going to be the reference triangle. The reference triangle comes from the original trig sub, x is equal to a sine theta. And I think it's best if you solve for the trig function, divide by a. Okay. Now, in a right triangle where one of the um, non-right angles are labeled as theta, and the sine of that theta is supposed to be x over a. Well, we know about Sakatoa, the fact that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So the numerator should be the opposite. The denominator should be the hypotenuse. So x should be across from the theta and a should be the hypotenuse. When it comes to the missing side, in this case, it's the adjacent to theta. The adjacent side is going to be actually that square root that got this whole thing started. If you do a Pythagorean theorem, you'll find out that that missing side is the square root of a squared minus x squared. Why do we need this? Well, in your antiderivative, you'll have trig functions in theta, but you will need to get them back into x. And this reference triangle's goal is the connecting back into x after doing that antiderivative. Okay, so here's the full workout and explanation for this particular type. Okay, on the next slide, I have um, at least this left column for the other types. And um, in subsequent videos, I will go through in detail each, of, you know, just like I did here, I will go through it for these other ones as well. But for type two, the one in the middle there, the trig sub is to let x equal a tan theta. And the radical gets replaced by a sec theta. For the third type, radical x squared minus a squared, the trig sub is to let x equal a sec theta, and the radical gets replaced by x squared minus a squared. In most cases, there's small technicality on that one. So I won't go through this click by click, but um, I'll have a separate video for column two and column three. We've already done the video for column one. Okay, so this is a, a summary slide for you. Write this down or take a screenshot and, and have this as a, as a guide for you a reference tool when you're trying to do trig substitution. It's, it's good to know which one is related to which trig sub and how the radical and the dx get replaced. Okay. All right. One more thing. Uh, I want you to know the steps. And so the steps for doing a trig sub problem, I already talked about them, but let me explicitly label them here. So there's three different types and we want to make sure that you choose the right type. So don't make a wrong choice in the beginning, of course. Once you make that choice, then you got to go through the sub substituting. The radical needs to be replaced. The dx needs to be replaced. And there might be some other things later on and you know, somewhere else in the integral that also need to be replaced. There might even be some cancellation that you can do. Upon doing that, then you've switched from an integral that had x in it to an integral that has theta in it. And then it should be something that you can integrate in step three. Your antiderivative will be in terms of theta, though. If you have a, um, a definite integral with bounds, you're trying to find the area under some curve, then you could do a limit switch. You know, it's only, it's only going to be, you know, for definite integrals where you could actually say, here are my x limits, and now let me trade them in for theta limits. But I would only caution you to do that if um, the angles that you end up are nice, recognizable kind of unit circle angles, pi over 4, pi over 6, pi over 3. 
Um, if you don't have those, then don't do it. Otherwise, you know, just stick to the reference triangle. That works whether you're definite or indefinite. And remember, its goal is to switch it back into x. You'll have an antiderivative in theta, and that switches back into an antiderivative in x. Okay, so that's it. Quick concept video and a couple reference slides for you that should help you, that should give you ammunition to make it through any trig sub question. Okay, all right, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. Uh, I'm here to help.